So I've got something that has really, really been on my mind lately, and I just like can't get it out. And that subject is that fans of streetwear are kind of the worst. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get demonetized right off the rip, so stick around because we're really going to dive into some whack stuff. But first, I've looked into it and a very, very small percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel. It's completely free. You just press that button and you will not regret it. Thank you so much. So I love streetwear. I really do. Like these days, I probably lean a bit more towards the luxury end of that spectrum, but still like luxury streetwear and still some regular streetwear in there too. But there is something I just cannot stand about a lot of streetwear lovers, or I guess for lack of a better term, we can call them hype beasts here. There, there's no other way to say it. And that is that they have some super, super outdated and socially conservative ideas. And what am I talking about here? Well, primarily I am talking about homophobia and just anti-queer attitudes. And it's like, this is streetwear. This is, for lack of a better term, clothing. And fashion in general has been dominated for so long by LGBTQ plus individuals. Why is there such a just like void of inclusivity within the streetwear scene? And this is a topic that's really been bugging me for a long time, I guess for personal reasons, because half the time when I post a video that people don't like, I get people in my comments calling me really rude homophobic names like i can take being called a mean name whatever it doesn't bother me but what does bother me is that these people as a whole are within this community that i love so much so i started thinking about it and really thinking about it diving deep in on it and i realized that while some of my ideas i may have been on the right track in others, I may have been stereotyping people a little bit, or even like prejudiced, I would go so far as to say. So I really, I have to say, I, when I first started thinking about this, I chalked it up to um, communities of color often being a bit more socially conservative than the rest of the like, I don't know, the left, I will say. And I'm going to assume most of us here are generally on the left. But I'm sure you've all noticed in certain communities of color, just LGBTQ people are not accepted to the same degree that they are in some other spaces. And obviously it's streetwear coming from cities, the streets, they are very, very focused as they should be within communities of color. So I kind of left it at that in my mind for a long time. But then when I really started looking into this, I realized that it actually goes a lot deeper and that I was being kind of unfair or at the very least i don't know not seeing the whole picture so i really really do not want to let my prejudice come off here or even go so far as racism coming into the picture i really don't think i am i think i'm right in some ways but it's just really really not the whole story so what is the whole story well the first thing my mind always goes to when i think about homophobia and streetwear is this thing that happened with high snobiety so High Snob, they are a streetwear like hype beast focused website, but they also talk about a lot of other stuff. They're very focused on art and things like that. And as a platform that celebrates artists, they at one point in the not too distant past, they made a post, a cover story about the artist Tom of Finland. And if you're not familiar with Tom of Finland, well, here we go. I don't want to show anything that's going to get us like demonetized here, but here we go. Oh, I didn't even know this was his real toku. Valio Lakonsin, very Finnish, I'll give you that. Uh, best known by Tom Finland was a Finnish artist known for his stylized, highly masculinized homoerotic art. Very, very celebrated artist here, as you can see. Probably going to need to do a lot of censoring here, so we'll just get out of there real quick. But he's also had a huge influence within fashion probably most uh, famously for his collaborations with J.W. Anderson, or Tom of Finland is not around anymore, but J.W. Anderson collaborated with the estate to do pieces like this, as you can see. So High Somebody wrote this article and they made an Instagram post about it. And this was the Instagram post 
And I remember the day this happened because I was like, oh, this is great. Tom of Finland is really cool, really important artist. I'm glad they're writing about him. But some other people were not so happy. Some of these commenters, I will not subject you to them, but the comment section was like overrun with straight up homophobes, just like the nastiest stuff you could say. And people like unfollowing high snobiety because of just because they posted this in their feed. And these, these guys, they just can't handle even seeing a drawing because that's how weak they are. And it was so bad that High Somebody felt they had to write an article about it, and I'm glad they did. And they called it Streetwear Has a Homophobia Problem. And this, I feel like, is a really great starting point to figure out what's going on here and where this homophobia in streetwear is coming from. So they note that this scene displays a growing sentiment among many streetwear aficionados that being gay, dressing gay, or associating yourself with anything LGBTQI plus is unacceptable in the scene. Any attempt to challenge the streetwear culture, aesthetic, or gender norms results in a frenzy of aggression. And that's a really good word because it's also very masculine. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, but streetwear is very male focused, also very like straight male focused, not always from the brands themselves, but definitely from the people who buy the stuff. This is the angle they're coming at it from, aggressive and masculine, and going along with that, usually straight. And Bobby Hundreds is a great source on this. And he said that streetwear was once underground and powered by culture and community that was down with the lifestyle. And fans carried a sense of ownership over a brand. Talking about it being counterculture, having skaters, surfers, graffiti artists, punks, and hip hop artists, all people for the most part that are generally pretty cool with queer people. But this started to change as things really, really blew up. Bobby Hundred said, we often think of streetwear as some kind of small community, when we really that hasn't been the case for a very long time. Oh, sorry, this is Brendan Babenzian. <laughs> no joke, from Supreme. He says, it hasn't really been a small community for some time. Yeah, yeah, the guy from Supreme, he knows that better than just about anybody. So where does it come from? Well, here's this quote. While each subculture has specific beliefs, norms, customs, traditions, and attributes, there are shared subcultural traits or common languages that includes hypermasculinity between them. At some point when you mashed up hip hop and skateboarding and graffiti artists, there was something in this culture that when it all merged together, brought with it this like hyper hyper masculinity. So here's really the crux of it, right? So these numerous fringe subcultures, that are linked by a central identity of aggressive masculinity and they came head to head with a broader culture eschewing this very characteristic is no longer ideal. So imagine this, you're in the street where seen hyper aggressively masculine and you're seeing this outside world changing and becoming more accepting of queer people and different types of people with different identities. And for whatever reason, when people in general, when any culture feels like it is being oppressed in some way, even if actually it's the other people who are way more oppressed, you start to like lash out. I don't condone it, but it starts to explain it, right? And this is very different from high fashion where you've got Ricardo Tichy from Givenchy. Um, they talk about Kim Jones and Shane Oliver from Hood by Air. All of these people bringing uh, a queer identity into luxury fashion. And there are crossovers with streetwear, but it never fully breaks through. Like. These are the guys, they're queer people at the very, very top of the industry, but down at the lower levels of everyday streetwear, that queerness is not breaking through for some reason. And this is even crazier when you consider people like Frank Ocean coming out, uh, Pharrell and Kanye, who both have really played with gender norms in their style. Pharrell, obviously known for like bright colors, they call out pinks here. Kanye wearing a Givenchy kilt back in 2013. But hey, I don't know. I don't know how people, you know, these homophobes kind of like justify that in their mind when even the people they look up to so much are turning those gender norms on their head, but yet still they hold on to that homophobia for some reason. And here's where part of an explanation I think starts coming in, okay? So you've in the streetwear scene, you've got this hyper masculinity and a bravado and boasting. And this covers everything from physicality 
fighting ability, financial riches, sexual prowess, coolness, and skill sets to the ability to get the hottest chick or ride in the game. Heteronormativity has been the lens on which youth culture and fashion has seen itself and marketed to. And this is super, super important. So I think that streetwear is kind of a way for people who like clothes and they want to look good and they can do that without going all the way into like fashion fashion, right? Because they think of that as gay. They think of it as loud and girly and flamboyant in a kind of homosexual way. So instead, they turn to streetwear where they see a much more like masculine and straight version of fashion. Like they can wear a black hoodie or just some like, you know, baggy jeans or whatever and not get anywhere near that kind of more uh, outwardly queer stuff that they have in the real like luxury fashion space. And of course, what is that tied into? People who are buying streetwear, they're trying to look good. And if they're straight, they're looking for the hottest chick in the game. And that kind of comes in with, again, this bravado, right? Sexual prowess, especially financial riches to kind of um, signal to people that, hey, I'm straight, I got money to spend on clothes, and I'm trying to get some, right? But why don't those luxury and streetwear spaces ever connect and accept that queerness because we've seen there have been tons and tons of luxury streetwear collaborations probably most famously you've got louis vuitton and supreme stuff like that but here's the thing most of all there is a segment of streetwear fans that strongly want streetwear to return to a closed community to keep it sacred special and most of all theirs let them have the high fashion. This is ours, they seem to be screaming. So it's almost a way to keep that high luxury fashion out. If you're pushing out any LGBTQIA plus people out of your streetwear space, then that is also kind of a way of keeping out luxury fashion at the same time, because often those two go hand in hand. But it's weird, like where did this come from? Because people like Paul Middleman from the original Stussy Tribe talks about how he grew up with streetwear starting in New York where you had Act Up Against AIDS posters all over the place. And one of the first places that stocked Stussy clothing was Pat Patricia Field, a place that attracted everyone who had no home. Queer, club, graffiti, and street cultures rubbed shoulders in a true New York come-as-you-are free cocktail. Although he says that homophobia has always been there, he says that, I don't know, sometimes it feels like a new thing, although it's not new. But what is new is how big it's become. And I think that's what's allowed the homophobia to really take hold, and not only take hold of the center, but really like spread its tendrils throughout every part of streetwear. If you're connected to streetwear in any way, shape, or form, you are going to see this homophobia pop up at some point in some corner of this stuff. And that's because of how big it's gotten. Anytime you get like an influx of normies, and I mean, people, the people who are coming into streetwear and really like taking it over as their identity, a lot of them really are normies, but they're just trying to act like they aren't. And that homopho homophobia is as normie as it gets, let me tell you. But one of the weirdest parts is how it still persists even though the designers and brands putting out the most popular streetwear are actively fighting against it. They talk about Virgil Abloh, who's worked so hard to be inclusive in his work at Off-White and Louis Vuitton. Um, stuff with, of course, Hood by Air and Shane Oliver, even Balenciaga. So back when they wrote this, they were talking about paying homage to the most iconic drag queen of all time. Even more recently, Demna Vesalia, the designer for Balenciaga, has gone even more just like pushing it out there, the kind of inclusivity, putting out like gay and pride uh, branded shirts and hoodies in a recent collection. And then you've also got Supreme, right? Doing collaborations with artists like Andrea Serrano, Leigh Bowery, and Nan Golden, all uh, people within the queer community. So as we can see, this stuff is like as deep rooted as it gets, but there's still further down this rabbit hole that we can go. So for some further reading, we can look at this article by ID called We Need to Talk About Streetwear's Problem with Queer People. And this came out uh, a couple years before the high snob article we were just looking at. And here they're talking to a writer from Hypebeast. And he says, people will pick and choose how much counterculture they want to really be a part of. Skateboarding? Sure. Pictures of drag queens? No way, bro. 
people only want to dip into counterculture as long as it doesn't actually ostracize them. It's both amusing and tragic. And that's a super, super important point here because that's where the kind of promise of streetwear can also be its downfall. Because with streetwear, you're kind of going halfway into fashion. You've got your everyday, just whatever, like Gap, Old Navy stuff at the very bottom or H&M, whatever. And then you've got streetwear bridging the gap between that stuff and the high luxury fashion. So it's these people looking for something kind of special and different, but streetwear never pushes past that ceiling to the actual like runway fashion that's truly different and pushing boundaries and much more accepting of queerness. Instead, they're at this middle point where they can be like, yeah, I'm different, I'm cool, but I'm not like that different, like queer or anything, right? Like no way, no way. It's, it's a weird middle point that these kind of socially conservative people place themselves in. And the author also notes that as streetwear's audience broadens and skews younger, the kind of people who engage with it become increasingly immature and those petty comments can develop into a hateful mindset. We've all seen this. Something blows up and suddenly all the little kids are in on it and with it they bring little kid immature ideas and homophobia is about as immature as it gets. And lastly, on this reading series, I just wanted to bring up this Daily Wildcat article, a publication I'm not familiar with, but they made a good point here, <laughs> good point, a funny point here, starting their article with the predatory guy in an anti-social social social club shirt and Comme des Garçons Converse trope is exhausted, yet somewhat deserved. I did not know that that was a stereotype, a predatory guy in an ASSC shirt and CDG play Converse, but um, yeah, I can kind of see it, kind of checks out to me. And in this article, this is why I love this, we get Bobby Hundreds once again coming at it with the truth. So, if streetwear was ever a space where gender norms were not prominent, then the same heteronormative boundaries that negatively impact the LGBTQ plus community would not be a point of contention. The essence of participating in fashion while aiming to exist under the radar tends to clash with the flamboyance typically associated with gayness. Remember what we were just talking about, like streetwear, it never hits that flamboyant level where, you know, people who are uncomfortable with their sexual identity and want to blast their straightness out, they find a safe space within streetwear much of the time. So Bobby Hundred says that streetwear began as an easy way for guys who were interested in clothes to get into it and also not be seen in a homophobic sense as being gay or trying to be like a girl. So it's fashion without having to be like, I like fashion and potentially signaling your queerness. Not that there's a problem with that, but some people do think there's a problem with that, unfortunately. And lastly, I want to come circle back around to where we started to kind of um, communities of color often being more socially conservative than the left as a whole, because I do think that that does play a part here. And these things, a lot of the time, they come from um, a higher prevalence of Christianity and conservative Christianity and things like that. But I think when you've got stuff like this bubbling around places like hip hop culture, it is naturally also going to be picked up by streetwear culture because the two are so inextricably linked. Like streetwear culture kind of is hip-hop culture in many ways. And I really, really want to show my sources here and show that this is not like personal prejudice on my part, but just facts that we kind of have to keep fighting against and bringing others in the community forward with us and moving them to be more tolerant and things. But it does exist here. Homophobia in ethnic minority communities is provably more prevalent than in other places. And we can see that this has ties to the church, as I mentioned, black church more specifically, hip hop, as we were talking about the baby and others. And you've got it even at colleges, weird attitudes towards HIV AIDS. Again, see the baby comments. And I will say that this is not exclusive to black communities. Many minority communities that have strong underpinnings of faith, especially in Christian churches, um, they have these attitudes as well, and they have, for whatever reason, been a bit more uh, pernicious than in other communities. So you've got people like DaBaby saying some crazy, crazy stuff that for some reason a lot of people didn't think was crazy. 
So I'm not going to say what he said. It's just disgusting to me. But you can read it here. You can look it up. And this stuff is totally within hip-hop culture. Obviously, if you're going to say it out loud, like the baby did, you are going to get absolutely eaten alive and canceled, at least by a certain section of the internet. But within hip-hop culture more generally, behind closed doors, these attitudes are, thankfully, thankfully they're getting much, much less popular. But as we see with the baby, and there have been many, many other instances of this, it is still there and it is still bleeding into streetwear. So what do you do about this? I mean, you have to change society as a whole. Streetwear does not move out of homophobia until society as a whole moves out of homophobia, unfortunately. So for now, it is kind of here to stay. So I'm doing my part. I am trying to fight against it with things like this video. Please, anyone watching this, fight back against it wherever you see it. And let's keep trying to change that society together, I guess. Oh,